Good morning, class, and welcome to your lesson video for Thursday and Friday, uh, September 19th and September 20th. We're going to be doing uh, in this lesson a continuation of what we started working on yesterday, which is uh, scale drawings and getting familiar with uh, what we're going to be doing and understanding the uh, sort of we're heading towards creating your own scale drawings and understanding um, the ways to do that. So in this continuation, we're going to be talking about scale and we'll look at all the practice problems that are in the packet that I gave you um, for, for you to work on uh, while I'm out. Now, just as a reminder, a scale drawing is a drawing of a real life object, but drawn in such a way that you're looking at it to a certain scale. Now, obviously, this particular uh, grid right here, or this particular table right here, is a scale, these are scale drawings of the real objects, but obviously they're much bigger in real life. So much to the point where you look on the left here and you'll see that this small, small distance right here from zero to 100 meters, this is uh, obviously a, a real life distance that is much smaller than 100 meters. But you can use this scale to get an understanding of how tall each of these objects is. So. You have access to rulers. Rulers are at the front table, and you're welcome to take one and use it and make sure you put it back when you're done, of course. Um, you're welcome to use that ruler to help you kind of figure out what these distances are, okay? So um, make sure you are ready to explain. In other words, when you say it is this tall because, uh, give me some information. You know, the Willis Tower is this tall because I took my ruler and I measured, and then tell me what you did, okay? Same deal with number two and number three. How long is that line segment that shows the scale to the nearest tenth of a centimeter? Express that scale in using numbers and words. So in other words, you would say, uh, you would measure this distance in number three and say, this distance is the same as 100 meters in real life, okay? So kind of what we talked about in class when we did the basketball court example. Now, in this question here, which says, are you ready for more? This is in your packet. Um, it says Mount Denali in Alaska is about 6,190 meters tall. If this mountain were shown on the scale drawing, how would its height compare to the heights of the other structures? Okay, so there's a lot of different ways to answer this question, but it is one I want you to consider. Okay, you have five different objects on this screen right here that you can determine based on this scale how tall they really are. And if you want to look them up on the web, you can totally do that as well. You'll get pretty accurate um, heights on here. So if that's the case, then let's say if we put Mount Denali on this graph, how, how tall would it be? How many times larger or smaller, if maybe, if you think it's smaller, um, how many times larger is it from these objects on here? Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, the other thing I wanna mention here, and we haven't come across this yet in grade seven, so I wanna take some time to, to talk to you about this. Um, in your notebook, you have, you're gonna have three sections, okay? So those three sections of your notebook are notes, classwork, and vocabulary, okay? So when we get to specific vocabulary words, because even though, and you may not realize this, we haven't had a whole lot of vocabulary yet, but we have certainly used a lot of new concepts and new words so far in all of our work. Uh, scale factor, scale copy to name two. Well, now we have two new definitions, and I would like you to use the definitions that are on here and add these into your vocabulary section because one of the things that we wanna do with vocabulary is we have to see it, we have to say it, and then we're gonna write it, and then after we do all the three of those things, we're gonna use it, okay? See it, say it, write it, use it, okay? So I want you to uh, incorporate these words into your vocabulary section, and you are free to, work, sorry, you're free to go back to the previous lessons in grade seven using our unit bookmark to find the other definitions that we were, looking, we were missing, scale copy and uh, uh, scale factor. Okay, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at the practice problems that you're going to be facing for this packet. And also as a reminder, uh, I say it in the Google Classroom post, of course, as well, but we're looking for Monday to hand this stuff in, and this is your weekly assignment. So uh, in this problem, our job is to figure out using the scales and the drawings to get actual lengths. So just like when we were doing the basketball court in class, we now have some scale drawings that we're going to use. And at the bottom, we've got a scale. We actually have two scales that'll help us do this. So you'll notice that this distance here to here would represent 10 feet in real life. 
and you have a ruler that you can use to get this you know distance so you can kind of compare and contrast and then one of the questions asks you to use the nearest meter so this is a scale here for that this is set representative of seven meters now i just want to point out just in case you were uh, curious when it asks for the wingspan of the plane which of the drawings do you think is going to help you do that so you have two choices really you can either a use this drawing here to do that but I think a better drawing to use is actually going to be this drawing right here because if you look at this one, you're going to see that you actually can get this wingspan just using a horizontal measurement. So if you just kind of take this uh, ruler and put it right up, I'm trying to move the line, it's not, there we go. Um, if you take it and put it, it's not letting me move it, but oh well. I'm not going to fight with the program while we do the video. <laughs> um, if you just measure this wingspan using horizontal line, you'll get that to the nearest foot and then just kind of compare it to the scale. Which one of these drawings is good for the height? Um, well, if we uh, are drawing, trying to figure out what the height is, which one of these pictures is good for that? So I, get a, I think the best picture is this one right here. And then the last question is it wants us to um, it wants us to do the uh, mark one to the nearest meter. This one here, you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna go from here to here, but you're gonna use this scale right here to, uh, to compare instead of using this scale. Okay, so that's problem one. For problem two, you have a, a statement here. A blueprint of a building includes a rectangular room that measure, measures three inches long by five and a half inches wide. The scale for the blueprint says one inch is equivalent to 10 feet in the actual building. What are the dimensions of the rectangular room in the actual building, okay? So, so just to understand, you are drawing, or trying to draw a, uh, trying to figure out, I should say, a rectangle, right? And your job is to say to me, or say to the person uh, on the problem here, what is the actual distance, right? So if this is to scale, which it's not, but you know, if it was to scale, this would be three inches long, and five and a half inches wide. But again, the scale in the problem is telling you that one inch is equal to 10 feet in actual distance. So you should be able to figure that out from here. Number three, we have a map of Lafayette Square, which is a garden north of the White House. And our job here is to use the scale to find the actual side lengths of Lafayette Square in feet. So at the bottom here, you see here's a scale. We can use any subdivision of this as well, but all the way from here to here is 200 feet. We can use the half of it, 100 feet. We can even use the half of that, a quarter of the whole thing, and say that that's 50 feet. So we have a lot of different scales ahead uh, available to us to do this. Uh, using an integral to measure the line segment of the graphic scale, how about how many feet does one inch represent on this map? So here's you got that scale. Um, how long is an inch from that, and approximately how many feet does that work out to be? And again, you might want to check your neighbor on that just to see what they're coming up with as well. And for the final problem, now this one here, I want to point out that this particular problem is of a lesson that we did not necessarily spend time in class on, but because you've got this video here in front of you, I'm going to show you how to do this problem and kind of ex try to explain a little bit about it. So uh, in this question here, Lynn created a scale copy of triangle A, this is triangle A, that had an area of 72 square units. So question number one, how many times larger is the area of the scale copy compared to that of triangle A? So if I look at triangle A, I can see that the area of this triangle is one whole unit here. And then I've got sort of some partial units going on here. I've got this one here and this one here. If I kind of took this particular part of the triangle right here, I can cut that off and put it here to get a whole, whole unit, so that'd be another unit. And then the same kind of thing here, I can cut this part of the triangle off here and then put that here and that would give me another whole unit. And then I've got this one here, a uh, little piece here. I can cut that off and put that here. I've got another whole unit. And then here, I don't really have much else I can add to it. I've already kind of removed thin things, so this is like a half unit. So that means that the area of this triangle is four and a half, okay? Now, if that's, a, if that's not convincing for you, I also can do the following. I know that the area of a triangle has a formula. The area of a triangle has a formula is uh, BH divided by two, or you can do one half times B times H. B and H being the base and the height. So if you look here and you see that, oh, it's three units wide, right? That's the base. And then how tall is it from this tip to this bottom? That's three. So it's three times three and then half of that. So the area is again 4.5. So the area of this triangle is 4.5. Now, how many times bigger is that 
to 72. Well, if I want to figure that out, I'm going to do 72 divided by 4.5, and I believe that is going to be about 16. And I'm going to use a calculator just to make sure. Let's do 72 divided by 4.5, 16. Go, Mr. Capita. All right, so 16 times. Now, based on that, this is the deal, though. Here's the tricky part, okay? When you scale a drawing, using a scale factor of say two, for example, the amount of area, the amount that the area increases is actually more than two. And I know you're gonna think like, huh, what are you talking about? Let me show you a simple example. So we know this triangle is three and three. What if I had a triangle that was six and six, right? In other words, the base was six here and the height was also six so we agree it's a scale copy right because i did this height and height and this is three and the base is three height of this is six and the base is six so we agree that's a scale copy right well the area of this triangle is one half of six times six which is 36 half of that is 18 so the area of this triangle is 18 okay now this triangle to this triangle the scale factor was two this is twice the size of this but in area it's actually four times as big so again, that can get confusing, huh? How come it's, you said it was twice as big? Why is the area four times larger? It has to do with the fact that area is measured using two dimensions. So if we double two dimensions, we've kind of increased the area by four, two times two. That's one way to look at it. Um, there's a lot of different ways and we will revisit this topic in the future, but understand for now, I'm kind of answering this question for you and doing a little bit of a lesson along with it, right? So 16 times larger, right? Area of this triangle is four and a half. Now, this is the hard part. 16 times larger is the area. What scale factor did Lin apply to the triangle to create the copy? Well, remember how I just told you that a scale factor of two resulted in a four time area increase? Well, if the area is increased by 16 times, that means that Lin's triangle used a scale factor of four to achieve that. Okay, and again, if you're not convinced, three times four is 12, so a height of 12 and 12 would be 12 times 12, which is 144, and then half of that is 72, okay? So again, if it doesn't make sense, it's okay. We'll have plenty of time to, to, uh, to do that. Now, I've kind of answered the next question as well. What's the length of the bottom side of the scaled copy? This was three, we scaled it up with four, so this length of the bottom side is gonna be 12. Okay, so that's your little uh, bonus for making it to this part of the video. We've got the answers to problem number four all here on the screen, along with a uh, sort of impromptu explanation from Mr. Copperdike. So anyway, uh, that is really what I'm asking you to complete this week as far as written work. There is Khan Academy practice problems I would like you to take care of as well, and uh, tomorrow I will um, probably post the quizzes for you to do as well on Google Classroom, okay? So I appreciate your efforts, and again, please work hard this week. Please make sure that you're understanding of the lessons. Please talk to each other and help each other out with the, pro with the problems if needed. Doesn't mean copy, but it does mean support each other, okay? And I'll be back on Monday, and I look forward to it, and we'll see you then.